Hi, so I want to create a context-free grammar for all strings that are not palindromes. So remember that a palindrome is a string W, which is equal to its reverse. So like, for example, A, B, B, A is equal to its reverse. If you read it forwards and backwards, it's exactly the same string. So uh, in this case, we would not accept that string. But if we looked at the string A, B, A, B, for example, then if we flipped the string around, that would be B, A, B, A. And so therefore we should uh, be able to accept that string. So what does it mean to, for a context-free grammar to generate the string of uh, all strings that are not palindromes? Well, the thing is that if we look at a particular string, so let's say that we have some stuff, and then let's say an A appears, then because it's a non-palindrome, it must match with a B somewhere. So this, it must match with a B. And everything that's on, on the outside here could be anything at all, essentially. So it could be anything over here, anything in here, anything in here. This A must match with this B somewhere. But it could be that this A appears after this B. It, may, it doesn't have to be before the B like I'm drawing here. It very well could be that it's the other way around. So we would have to be able to account for this. And what could happen is this stuff on the, the outside, so like this half, sorry, this little bit at the beginning and this bit at the end might be exactly the same in reverse order. So it might be a palindrome up to this point but uh, or maybe not so there could be some mistakes out here that cause it to not be a palindrome but there must be a mistake somewhere there is something that is not a palindrome so let's actually generate this thing so what we have here is let's make a start variable and let's handle the outsides first so the outsides could be it could be palindromes up to some mistake that happens in the middle so to handle palindromes that is just a s a because the ends have to be the same we're just going to recurse until we find a mistake somewhere or it could be the case that b's are bookending the string but then we want to be able to find a mistake somewhere so if there's a mistake, so note that we're closing in on the string here, in the middle of the string. So we're popping off one character off of each end, and then we hope to find some mistake somewhere. So once we find the mistake, then literally anything can occur in the middle here, because once there's a mistake here, we already know it's not a palindrome, so anything can go in the middle. So then the way to handle this is we're going to do this, a similar idea, with an A at the front, but a B at the end. So this is handling the pink case right here. But in the middle, uh, we should allow anything. So I can't have the variable S right here because that would, that would allow us to have something that is a palindrome here and it may not be able to generate the right strings here. We wanna be able to generate anything right here. So what I'm gonna have is a variable T where t can generate anything. So t is going to be able to generate uh, any a's that it wants or, or b's or empty. So it can make any number of a's or b's or any combination thereof of them. And then we're going to have a very similar idea over here uh, where we have the b first. So once there's a mistake somewhere that allows it to not be a palindrome anymore, then we're allowed to recurse and then we effectively can just generate the rest of the string because this T variable can generate anything. So let's do an example. So let's, let's do that ABAB example that we had before. So in fact, there's exactly one rule we can apply up here because we can't apply this one because the, it doesn't start and end with an A, we can't apply this one because it doesn't start and end with a B. We have to apply this one because this last one can't be applied. So we apply this one. So S goes to A, T, B. So at this point, we have taken the A off the front, B off the end. So then now here, this B, A will be able to be generated by the T variable because 
um, because the T variable makes every string. So here we're gonna uh, generate the B first. So we'll have A, B, T, B. And then that will generate, that will kick off that one B. And then we'll generate the final A of the, so we'll have A, B, A, T, B, because we applied T goes to A, T. And that will kill off that A there. And then finally we apply the final rule, which is setting uh, T to empty. That B was not good. Let's do that again. All right. So then now let's try to do the example that is a palindrome, so A, B, B, A. So we have to apply this rule right here because none of the other ones apply in this situation. Um, it's the only one that starts and ends with an A. So we, oops. so we have to do it this way. S goes to A, S, A. Then... The, so that means we have killed off the A at the front, A at the end. Then we have to apply this second rule right here because that's the only thing that involves two Bs, starting and ending with the B of the things we haven't matched yet. So then we'll have A, which is because that's already been generated, B, S, B, because that's what we just made from the rule, A. And then that kills off the two Bs in the middle. But the problem is that we don't have a way of eliminating this S here. So because this S can't be eliminated, because there's no rule corresponding to uh, S going to empty up here, so therefore this string has no derivation in this grammar. And so therefore this, uh, this string can't be generated, and so this gives an idea that this grammar generates exactly the strings that are not palindromes. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about anything related to non-palindromes and context-free grammars. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.